Breaking down opening week, three days down in the Gavit tip-off yeah. games. Now two more days to go, and we've got three games tonight. Jay Alter, John Fanta, let's do shoot-around. John, I'm happy to be back in studio. You had a lot of fun out in Chicago breaking in Wintrust Arena last week, and but it's good to be reunited. Any big takeaway from opening week? A lot. Team's looking like they're in mid-season form. This guy was out at Xavier. They've put up, well... We're going to show you right now on a brand new segment. Are you ready? It's the fastest two minutes. Big E shoot around edition. Cue the music and those <laughs> highlights. Here we go. Round ball rock. We go fastest two minutes with Taz. Kyrie Thomas with a shot. You have to start with the Blue Jays. A statement win on the road against a ranked Northwestern team. They came to play. Great win for Creighton. By the way, Kyrie Thomas coming up on Shoot Around today. We go to Seton Hall at the Rock. Delgado, he can dunk it, he can dime it. How about this? And then the follow slam. Pirates poured it on in that second half. Pogo Sonogo. I Ishmael love it. is a glue guy for the Hall. Pirates roll past Indiana. That was the first Big East win the Gavit games. Here's Kamar, not Alec Baldwin. No sophomore slump here, John. Butler, they fall to Maryland, but the Bulldogs, still 2-1 and one on the year, look good. Andrew Rowdy Rousey. How did he make this, Jay? Circus shot, and it falls for the senior. The fighting Steve Wojciechowski's lose to Purdue, but I like Marquette a lot this season. We turn to Friar Towns. Fun to listen to Timmy Brando and Bill Raffery back at it. Watch him go, Nate Watson. The freshman flush. And these big fellas, they like to run the floor for Ed Cooley's team. That was fantastic to see, but this Minnesota squad show why they were ranked. Let's go to a dunk party. A doctor told me you need a daily dose of dunks. You get a couple from the Wildcat. Struess is loose. Max Struess in Chicago. Can't get enough dunks here on Big E Shoot Around. How about one more from the Johnnies? Bashir Babadook Ahmed. <laughs> and then Xavier back-to-back 100-point games to start the season. Mid-season form, folks. Chris Max ready to roll. I need some free corn dogs, right? Oh, yeah. Free corn dog alert. Let's go to our nation's capital. There he is, Jay. What we've all been waiting for a legend returns to the Hoyas sideline. Jesse, jump in the go van. <laughs> That's your best one of the day. That's your best one of the day. Hey, jump in the go van. coach, congrats on win number one. <laughs> jump in the go van. You gave him the instruction in your sit down. So here's the thing. This is wild. We were just discussing. This is completely, forget the format. We were discussing before the show, Patrick Ewing, you're a Knicks guy, right? You're a Knicks fan? Yes, yes. He doesn't Grew have up a, a Knicks nickname. fan. No, you've got to give him one. That nickname's going to come here in his time on the hilltop. If you have a good nickname for him, feel free to comment Send it on in. the show. Patrick, oh, our, our producer, producer Brad Zek, Patrick Chewing. I don't like it. All right, oh, carry on. Boy. We go to fast break. By the way. Any questions or comments you got in the show, we'll feature them. We're on Big East, Facebook, Fox Sports Go, Twitter. Kyrie Thomas and Seton Hall hey, coming up. look, if you have a hot take two games into the season, we want to hear it here on Big E Shoot Around. He's been mentioning them all week in the office. Literally. Yes. Let's go to fast break. Let's start running the floor with Jimmy Butler, the Marquette alum. They were all out this week supporting the Golden Eagles. This is what you love to see. It's not just Jimmy Butler and Marquette. Chris Dunn tweeted out he was watching Providence. People just, they love their school, they care about their school, and you love the swag from the all-star, Jimmy Butler. When you were in high school, did you have the jacket? No, not, not athletic enough to pull off the, uh, the Blue Wave varsity jacket. You didn't play high school sports? No, they wouldn't let me. Tried. The jump Cut. he showed at Providence. Cut. Yeah, the jump. Yeah. That's all I you had the varsity. I had the jacket. Left for two guard. Years. Yeah, left That's guard. Right. 64. <laughs> a lot of holding penalties. <laughs> Darren Rovell was tweeting last night. Love Darren. And he was last night after the Creighton Northwestern game. Hats off to the Blue Jays. First of all, Darren, your team lost. How could it be the most entertaining game in 21 years? You made the tournament last year. Wouldn't that be a little more entertaining? I, it was a great game for Creighton fans. I don't know how Northwestern feels about losing at home, being well, the 20th an, ranked team. Yeah, but sometimes you lose in an entertaining game. The Browns certainly don't. But yes, Northwestern did last night. <laughs> He's so mad. <laughs> Season's begun, and Alter had a lot ready for this one. The Browns are uh, facing Jacksonville this week, by the way. Let's move on to Big East Hoops. Georgetown Stars were out and about. 
on Sunday in D.C. Dikembe. Those are the three best big men in Georgetown history. Great photo. No, 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 no. Give me the give me the finger wag. Okay, what year is that Georgetown sweater from for Jeff Van Gundy? Late 80s. <laughs> and Otto Porter Jr. after that max deal with the Wizards. Courtside. Who's really that? Cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was fantastic to see really cool. MJ there and to see the Georgetown Hoops family there in DC at Capital One on Sunday. It does show the support here. And I think that with the way the Hoy has been playing, remember he told us preseason? Coach Ewing said we're going to play faster. They have been. A lot of dunks, a lot of transition play, NBA style for Coach Ewing's team. And Patrick said a lot of my friends are going to be there. Boy, did they support him for his first win against Jacksonville. So the Gavit game's going on. Five games down, now three to go with two ahead tonight. An FS1 doubleheader starts at 6.30. Let's throw it back to the first year of the Dave Gavit tip-off games. First year of the Gavit tip-off games, honoring the late, great Dave Gavit in his home of Friartown. Chris Dunn running the point those days for the Providence Friars. And, man, a couple of assists. This time, Kyron Cartwright, a couple of years younger, same smooth lefty stroke. Rodney Bullock getting in on the action. Providence rolling at home. Cartwright getting to the hoop. Ben Bentle with the follow. That really got the crowd behind him. Illinois. Tough match, Chris Dunn. Give me all three of these. Love the Gavit games. Bullock inside. Providence up by one. Need a last defensive stand. Oh, so close. Last shot for the Illini goes begging. Providence hangs on 60 to 59. Great night in the Gavit tip-off games last night for the Big East. Seton Hall started it off with a great victory at home against Indiana. And then Creighton, we've talked about it already, a number 20 victory on the road against Northwestern. John Fanta spoke to the stars of each game, starting off with Kevin Willard and Angel Delgado. Coach, what shifted for your team in the second half to really dominate this one? Well, I, th I think the biggest adjustment we made was just reminding everybody that we got a 6'9", 6'10", All-American down low and that the more he touches the basketball, the better everybody gets. And, you know, Desi Rodriguez really got us started going in the second half, made a big three, and then he just kept chucking it inside, chucking it inside, and he just tell, kept telling everybody, throw it inside to the big man, and the big man played great. Yeah, he said it. As soon as we got to the locker room, he said it. And I was, I was, I was ready for it. I didn't took a lot of shots the first half. They, got, they played really good. They played really good defense. And the second half, I came with the mindset that we got to take – take them out of the court and, and protect the biggest. We talked about your depth in the preseason, but Mike Bray told you in the preseason, you got to get old. How much of that experience play out in this one? Oh, it's the best advice I ever got. Um, you know, it really is true. You know, when your older guys are coming out of the halftime and, and they understand where we are in the game, you're still up one. Uh, you haven't played overly well. Um, we didn't defend the three overly well, but you're still up one. Then th their confidence rubs off on the young guys. It feels great. It feels great. These guys work so hard, and they, they believe in me. I believe in them. So that's how our chemistry is really good right now, and then we, we're ready for every game. It feels great. You know, we, we've been in these situations before, so who else um, would coach want to go to is the seniors. So I think we did a great job of that tonight. It's Big East versus Big Ten all week long. What's it mean to represent the conference in these types of matchups? Um, it's, it means a lot. You know, I've been, I've been watching. Um, a lot of the a lot of the games, and um, I couldn't wait to play this one. So it felt good coming out and getting a win. It's great because we want to make the Big East the best, the best conference in the country. So I'm watching every single game from the Big East. I'm watching everybody. So I'm really proud of how the Big East is doing right now because I know it's the best conference in the in the country, and that's what we're proving right now. I think it's important. I think I think it's also great that we're honoring Dave. Uh, obviously, someone that sacrificed so much, uh, created the best basketball conference. Uh, I think it's important for all our coaches to understand uh, the importance of when you play in the Gavit games, you know, the importance that Dave was to this conference. And, uh, you know, to get a W, I think we needed a W, is good. A win like this calls for nachos. Always nachos. Kevin Willard. Don't all Northwestern don't spell that word? I think they do. Oh, what a wow. shot from Thomas in the corner. And great back up to Tom, one. Thomas has been the guy. He has been very aggressive on the offensive end. Look at the... The answer from Kyrie Thomas. 
again, playing with four fouls. Marcus Foster, just two for ten from the floor, but it doesn't matter late. Marcus <laughs> Foster heating up. And he shushed the crowd a little. Three. Rebound by Crumple. Crumple puts it back in, and the Jays by five. And the switch is what led. Oh, uh, really just staying focused to our game plan. Uh, we, we had a lot of emphasis on defense. Uh, they run a lot of sets. Uh, in the uh, uh, quarter quarter, so we really just had to really out rebound them and just push the ball in transition. On top of you and Marcus Foster, your freshmen have really stepped up. What exactly have they added? Uh, I mean, they had a, a lot of confidence in uh, going within like the depths of the bench. I mean, you got Mitchell who can shoot it and drive it, as you saw last night, and then Tyshawn just playing with a, a, a amazing confidence. It, it was crazy, you know. Uh, it was something that we needed them to do, uh, which was step up and make big shots for us. A career high in points for you. Why have you been able to find so much success on the offensive end lately? Uh, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, like I said, just you know, I, I'm trying to play with confidence um, and really just you know step in that leadership role. We don't have uh, as many scores as we, and talented scores as we did last year. So uh, me being you know one of the uh, guys coming back with a little bit more experience uh, is just something I have to do and fulfill. Coach McDermott said after the game, there's a bond with this team. You just said leadership, yes. but why is this group so strongly mended together? I'll have to say this bond, is, it is pretty strong, kind of like last year's team. We were uh, also the same, and uh, we all want, want the same thing. We all trying to reach that one goal, and uh, we just need to stick together. And last night you had adversity. Toby Hegner goes down. Martin yes, yes. Crumple is able to come up big for you guys. Coach has talked about his maturity. What have you seen from him? Uh, like, kind of like you just said, the coach seen a lot of maturity. Uh, it's just a little thing uh, from his freshman year. And so now he's very, he, he's been very mature, like making a smart play, not getting, you know, a little dumb ticky tack foul that he uh, really doesn't need to get. Uh, he's also playing with uh, a lot of confidence as well. He's one of our uh, most explosive bigs um, uh, right now. And I mean, uh, he wants it. Uh, he's been he's been in, in the gym a lot. He's been doing what he's supposed to be uh, doing, and uh, he's really just showing it uh, as of right now. All right, Thanksgiving's next week. What's your favorite thing at the table? Probably dressing. Dressing. That's that's my go-to. A lot of dressing. You were the dressing for your team last night. There you go, Kyrie Thomas, all over the place, a two-way weapon. <laughs> Congratulations on the win, my friend. What? A performance by Thomas and was. people around Omaha have talked about how much his game has evolved but Jay this is a guy that the nation found out about last night well it was a statement not only for Kyrie Thomas but the entire Creighton team and John let's be fair we coming into the season we didn't know what to expect from the Blue Jays a lot of moving pieces but Kyrie Thomas delivered Marcus Foster delivered and he said something that stuck out to us. The freshmen gave the upperclassmen confidence with how well they played in a road atmosphere against a top 20 team. Yeah, and that's been the biggest question for the Creighton Blue Jays. Looking for a new point guard, losing Justin Patton in the NBA draft, who would compliment Thomas and Foster? Those freshmen Hey, have done Sean, it. commenting in on Facebook, Big East, best conference in basketball. It helps when you get wins like you did last night. And you heard it from Angel Delgado. Yeah, and how much do you think it means to, especially a senior like Angel, representing not only Seton Hall, but the entire conference in a big game like last night? Gavit games roll on, so more big games tonight. An FS1 doubleheader starting at 6.30 Eastern. Here's the breakdown of where we're at. Nebraska St. John's get things started. Opportunity for the Johnnies at home. Xavier Wisconsin fires it up. We'll talk more about that one later. Then Friday, the Gavit tip-off games ends with DePaul and Illinois in-state battle there. We start with St. John's and Nebraska, and you said opportunity. The Red Storm have a new look to them. Offensively, they've got a new dimension with Marvin Clark and Justin Simon as well. I like how Justin Simon has come in and really meshed well with Pons and Levette. Those are three guards that you would think aren't capable of sharing the ball as much as those three have. And I thought it would take time. I did. And I think what you're realizing is Justin Simon in that transfer year, he already got the gelling past them. I like what the Red Storm are bringing to the table. Meanwhile, you called Xavier last week, and 
what they're doing down low is what could give Wisconsin some issues because, yes, they can go big with Tyreek Jones inside, but they've got another post guy in Karam Cantor who can go all over the place. And it's been a slower start for Karam Cantor, again, adjusting from the Horizon League. Wisconsin is, is a big-time opponent. Uh, I don't know how much you'll see Karam Cantor against uh, the Badgers, but what I really like about Xavier is you've got the experience with Trayvon Blute and J.P. Makura, but you add the best freshman class in the conference. Najee Marshall is a man. He does not look like a freshman. He has been outstanding. And, and you could say, but Jay, they've played Moorhead State and Ryder. Wait until you see it on the road in Madison against Wisconsin. Paul Scruggs, Najee Marshall, learn the names. Here's Chris Mack on tonight's matchup. I think anytime you play uh, a Big Ten team on the road, especially one as accomplished as Wisconsin's been over the last 20 years or so, um, you don't have to you don't have to say a whole lot. You know they they understand uh, it's a big game. It's not going to make or break either team season, but you know what an opportunity. And you know for us, it, it's great preparation for our games in the Big East, which are you know coming in a month. So. Um, like I said, it's, it's an awesome opportunity. Our guys are excited. I'm sure Wisconsin's guys will be as well. 17,000 fans in there, and about 50 of them are rooting for Xavier. So um, it'll be a great environment and one that I think a lot of college players would, would love to be a part of. All right, John, so we got a comment on Facebook, prediction for tonight's showdown between Xavier and Wisconsin. I think you bring up a great point with what Najee Marshall adds, but Xavier has been a tremendous defensive team and on the glass as well. And that's what Wisconsin does well. They guard extremely well. I look for Xavier to pull out their 1-3-1 one, one zone, potentially. Mm -hmm. But revenge is in the minds of the Musketeers, and that's Jay. And that's what I was going to point to. J.P. Makura and Trayvon Blewett have it in their minds. Blewett has spearheaded the effort for Xavier with 51 points Whoa. in 50 minutes on the season. I mean, are you kidding me? That is just really, really good basketball. So I like these two to get it done. And now the Musketeers have the depth. They've got the experience. The total package of a Dark Horse Final Four contender, they show why tonight. Musketeers, John alluded to it, as a two seed, knocked out by Wisconsin two years ago. Trayvon Blewett's going to make sure that his Musketeers leave Madison with a victory tonight. You saw it in our debut of Fastest Two Minutes, but we're just getting started with a dunk party in opening week. It's time for a BE Shootaround Dunk Contest. Let's do it. Doctors say a dunk a day keeps you healthy. Oh! I like that. Alley oop. I want some more. Simon says, Justin Simon up high. Really like it. Early, like it. So, what, what are we doing here? You can comment in. What's your score? Oh, I'm giving a score yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the 10. Hot take king, I don't want to so. keep it too high. That's an eight. It's a good alley oop. It's an eight. But I think we can, we can get a little better this season. It's a seven for me. Seven it's for seven you. For, what's your vote, guys? What's your number? We're going to see another one here. Let's see our next dunk here. Send in your scores. Yes. What's your Some thunderous dunks, and here is the breakout by DiVincenzo. How about that one? And he is fouled. That's big time from the sophomore. I think because he got hit, another look. Oh, that's a nine. That's better than ragu sauce. That's like homemade. Homemade nine. Give me a nine. Okay, I'll go with, I will go with a, a nine as well. I'll go with an eight and a half. That look right there. Eight and a half. Eight half. half. Yeah, eight this? and a half because this is tough. It's going to be tough throughout the season. Are we allowing this, this Facebook? One. Are we allowing this? Facebook, yeah, yeah. of course. That. This is Co Biggie shoot around. No rules. Comment right. in that John can't do half points. No. Let's see it. the next one. Here's the third one. Dunk contest. Oh, squeeze it. Indiana turns it over again. Oh, 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 Watch the rim. You kill, have killed kill the gang the here. Ah. That's an eight for me. Two-handed flush. This is versatile. This is getting up. My goodness, That's from a eight. freshman nonetheless. It's an eight. I like it. It's an eight, too. I give Strong. DiVincenzo the win for this dunk contest, though. Yes. DiVincenzo dunk of the week here on Big E Shoot Around. But you tell us. What yeah. do you think? Oh, is, is there one more dunk? There's a bonus, bonus dunk. Bonus dunk. Bonus dunk. Here's bonus number dunk. four. All right, we crowned a winner. Whoa! From before the game. Oh boy. I like it. What do we think here? How about the slow mo from Ujash Patel, our producer? Woo! Here we go. Can you see that? Folks, if you it's a point to this this uh, camera it's here directly, 10. if they could change the shot here. That's a 10. <laughs> That's a 
does not look like a 10, but it is. Oh, it looks like a zero or yeah, a one? Yeah, it looks like a big goose egg. Um, There's a it's one. a 10. It's a one. There's the winner there, Miles <laughs> Kale. This yeah. looks very good. Miles Kale. That'll do. Uh, That'll we're taking do. your questions here. Only got a couple more minutes left on the show. Who do you have winning tonight? St. John's or Nebraska? Xavier or Wisconsin? Let us know who your favorite player to watch has been this week. But first, Marissa Pilla has Thursday pickup back. Basketball movies of oh, all time. So many to choose. Well, the tape Space here. Jam. Space Jam. What is the best basketball movie of all time? Best basketball movie? Mm -hmm. Loving basketball. That's a good one. But see, I got another one. See, I got Space Jam, too. Space Jam is always up there. Yeah, you got to put that in there. Are you Team Monsters or are you Team Looney Tunes? <sighs> team Looney Tunes. Looney I, can't, Tunes. I, can't, I can't be Monsters. Nah, right? I can't you got to go with the Looney Tunes. What is the best basketball movie of all time? He Got Game. Yeah? By far. We haven't heard that one yet. No one said that? No. That is by far the best basketball movie ever okay. come out. Mm. Coach Carter. It's a good one. It's yeah. more of a serious one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it's got a lot of meaning yeah. behind yep. it. I like that choice. I mean, I hear a lot of people, like, you know, Jesse saying Space Jam, but you can't forget about Like Mike. Though, so like Mike. Can't forget about Like people Mike. People did forget about Like uh -huh. Mike. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Back when Bow Wow had the Lil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I like Hoosiers a lot. That's a new yeah. one. But, well, not a new one, but yeah, we yeah. haven't heard it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I like that yeah, answer. Sure. Okay. Bestie basketball. Space Jam. Space Jam. Duh, Space Jam, right? yes. Space Jam. Now, are you Team Monstars or are you Team Looney Tunes? Team Monstars. I used to have all the action figures at home. Yeah? Yeah. Be what's your favorite basketball movie? My favorite basketball movie, Above the Rim. Above the Rim. Mm -hmm. That's a new one. No one said that one. Yeah, they probably don't know about it, but that's a classic. This week, the Dave Gavitt tip-off game is going on. It's the third annual installment of those, and Big East coaches have talked about the architect of this conference throughout the week on FS1. Uh, this league that had the vision to put this together and had the passion to put this together. Uh, so I think it's extremely important to keep that going because our players need to understand how important he was in this league's existence. Well, I think when you're talking about the game of college basketball, you're talking about somebody who uh, arguably should be on the Mount Rushmore uh, of college basketball for all he did, obviously with the Big East Conference, but also m taking the game uh, to the modern era. And he's a big reason why, and his leadership on a conference level, on a national level, uh, has uh, propelled the game to the heights that it's at right now. Just the fact that Coach Gavin's name is on the game symbolizes excellence. And we should honor him a little bit more because I think he's bigger uh, than the actual Gavin games on what he did for the Big East, what he did for USA Basketball, um, and what he's done for the game in general. Um, I don't want to call him Naismith, but he's right next to him. Nothing better. Ed Cooley said it all right there. It's been really cool to see that all throughout the week on FS1 and to see also players during press conferences and interviews. Like last night I was at Seton Hall and someone asked Angel Delgado about what it means to face the Big Ten teams this week in the Dave Gavitt games. And he said that Coach Willard actually talked to them a little bit about it when he was younger, saying why they play these games. Mm -hmm. So really cool to see that. And Dave truly deserves it. You've seen... Bill Raftery all week on the FS1 coverage talk about the guy that Dave was, a true legend. It's absolutely true. We wouldn't be here without him. So it's great that early season, you get together with the Big Ten, provide some entertaining basketball, and honor a great man. So there's three games tonight, St. John's, Nebraska, Xavier, and Wisconsin, and then Providence takes on Washington around 9.30 at the Garden in the 2K Classic. Oh, great game. And the Friars, they have put on a tough non-conference slate. Battling number 15 Minnesota, quick turnaround for the Huskies. How have your remote skills been this week? <laughs> they've been good. They've been tested, the but they've been good. I'll tell you, you can find me. That FS1 doubleheader, I will be glued to my chair watching that. Will you bring a Sharpie next week when you go to make the 10 score? Yes, Sharpie. Sharpie. We're, we'll, we're working we'll be, on things. The dunk contest, we'll be, we'll be ready to go. We're still week. in non-conference mode, too. Right. Got to ramp it up. But remember, next week, we are on Wednesday. 
Yes. We're on Wednesday Turkey afternoon. Day Thursday. We're on Wednesday. Right. I, uh, Thursday, they say, you know, there's no work when we're broadcasting in terms of holidays. <laughs> Thanksgiving something that we both partake in. You're bringing the stuffing next Wednesday? That's right. You've got the turkey. I've got the turkey. Perfect. We'll be here next Wednesday afternoon breaking down Feast Week and much more on Big E Shoot Around. Whether you're driving to Madison right now for Xavier, Wisconsin, <laughs> or to Champaign, yes. Illinois, wherever you're going, we're happy to be with you here as the Gabba tip-off games are rolling. We're just getting started this season. He's Jay Alter. I'm John Fanta. This has been Big E Shoot Around.